it almost found us. I mean, there's always been that that vein of uh, shit kicker music through uh, through Cracker. Dave and I grew up not too far from Bakersfield, uh, Oildale, which is uh, Merle Haggard, uh, Buck Owens country, and uh, sort of Dwight Yoakam too. He spent time with. These are all people that influenced us. And uh, you know, I, I I played around that area a little bit here and there. Her ballad for you now. <laughs> With her black shining hair Yeah, she had my baby Caused me to care And coldly she left me To suffer and cry Yeah, she wore red dresses Told such sweet lies. Yeah. I never knew him. Well, you know, the thing about it is, though. It's, a, it's not really, it's not like funny. It's not a funny record. It's not supposed to be funny. I mean, I know we use the name Ironic Mullet, but it's really kind of really become something else now. It's like a record about, um, well, it's, it's just kind of about America or something. I don't know, it sounds really stupid, but it's like something like that. I have this aunt in England, okay? I think it was the first time I went over to England to play, probably with Camper Van Beethoven back with the Take the Skinheads bowling single. And um, anyway, she says, sitting across from me at a table, you know, in like some pub or something like that, she goes, oh, yeah, it's a dangerous business you've got there. And I'm like, what, what, what do you mean? And, uh, you know, I'm thinking like, uh, maybe it's like, you know, being in a band, drugs and drinking, driving around in a van, I mean, I, I don't really know. Uh, she's like, no, 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 using irony in America. And that's sort of what we're arguing about right now, is that this is a serious story. And maybe, I, I'm, you know, now I'm going to leave irony, irony, the word ironic, out of this whole thing now, because <laughs> I think she's right. I don't think Americans understand that. You can tell a serious story using humor and sarcasm and irony and... and all these other tools. In fact, that's what good authors do, is they use these tools to tell a story. And to me, this is a serious story. And, and, and
So every record has its own life. I mean, every record that I've started out doing had an idea of what it was going to be, but then somehow it took on a life of its own and it changed. And in a way, this record changed more than a lot of other records I've done while we were doing it. One of the things especially that I noticed, although we were having a lot of fun doing this record, um, it kind of developed a darker edge. And a lot of that had to do with what had happened to us and like the whole country in the time that we were working on this project. We, we went from being um, sort of a benevolent nation, a nation that had the sympathy of the world as the result of these terrorist attacks. We were seen as this great beacon of democracy and multiculturalism that had been attacked by this evil power. And, you know, I just wanted so much for my country not to turn into the Yahoo sort of redneck cowboys again that we seem to every 20 years or so. And playing these songs sort of took on more meaning to me. It's really good that we did this because I feel like in a way we took a little snapshot, a little portrait of what this country is, and it's not necessarily flattering. Um, some of it is and some of it isn't, but it's not the picture that most people want to see. Oklahoma. His wife's name is Betty Lou Thelma Liz. And he's not responsible for what he's doing. Cause his mother Oh, you mean the, the what? What song is it? Really the second cell song. 